Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. My mission is to get to know the author behind the book. Today's mission is to get to know tradeswoman, artist, writer, teacher, queerly two-speeded Métis, author Lori Potvin. Lori, are you ready? Yes, I am. Thanks for having me, Crystal. It's such a pleasure. Okay, so Lori, how old were you when you rode your first motorcycle? I would say I was uh, anywhere from between 10 and 12 years old. <laughs> and was, what uh, is the best thing about riding a motorcycle? Oh, just wind in your hair and freedom and uh, just the, the road ahead. Okay. How many tattoos do you have? That's a big question. It's, uh, and most people don't really um, count. I don't count because one has bled into another, has bled into another over the years. I will say I first got uh, my first tattoo when I, over 40 years ago. And that was at a time when it was underground and uh, you had to know someone who knew someone who tattooed and so that's how it all started and I still collect tattoos today. And do you have I mean I know each one has a special significance for you uh, is there a favorite of all of them? Uh, maybe on different days you know there yeah. I think it's a you know you know tattoos also are you don't see one alike or a collection alike. So they're very, very personal. I do, you know, enjoy the, uh, the memor the um, tattoo of my mom, which memorize, memorize, mem her life memory. I don't, I forget, I'm having a brain cramp there. I, you know, it, and, uh, and others. And I, I just also, now that I've gotten older, I just love showing them. So it's who I am. Love it. What is your favorite animal? Uh, I would say an owl. I've had owls come to visit the last three summers here at the lake, and they're just uh, beautiful. They just remind me to be wise and, and uh, you know, come with a good heart and a good mind. Oh, and have they, been, uh, have they been calling as well, or have they been coming in silence? No, no, we can hear them, the barred owls, and often they're, they call to each other so early in the spring where they're they're hooking up, uh, checking, you know, let's make an arrangements for dates, I suppose. <laughs> um, what is the best thing about living at the lake? It, uh, it's, it's just peace and it's, uh, it's included. It's all bushed in now. So it's, it's, uh, uh, I can't see my neighbors. I, I have great neighbors. It's not, that's not the point. It's just, it's so, it's wonderful just to be, surrounded by mature trees and mature bush by the water and it just gives me a sense of safety and a sense of peace oh and do you have bears that walk by your place i have uh i have seen a bear a couple of bears and last uh maybe last summer or the summer before there was a mom with two cubs around but i didn't see her i just heard of oh. her checking out uh checking out some properties Oh my goodness. Um, I mean, you've been a teacher for over 30 years, so you've, you've seen a lot. Um, what would be one of your most memorable moments as a teacher? Oh, geez, that's, I think one of the most memorable moments for me is one of the ones that I write about where I was, teaching uh, at a at uh, TIS and I was working in a um, an employment program with uh, teenagers that came with uh, I, just, I don't want to say behavior disorders but they were they, you know they just came from some rough homes and they reminded me of myself and um, you know the the times where we we organize day trips and an overnight camping trip here to the lake. And it was just, it was just a celebration and it was a happy, fun time where we, you know, we fished, we swam 
and uh, it was just you know that, those bonds and those connections and I hopefully those memories for the the kids that that uh, I shared uh, you know my space with here that, uh, that you know that they'll forever remember that and in a good way and that's uh, that's my hope. I'm sure I'm sure they will Lori I'm sure they will. Last question. Why are you thankful for having multiple sclerosis? Oh, yes. I, you know, it's, I, I've had a different kind of feedback with that, but I think that it's, it took me a little bit to get there once I was diagnosed, mm -hmm. but I, I, it's part of acceptance. It, I changed uh, a lot of my habits. I quit smoking. I quit drinking. I, um, uh, and later on, I lost weight and got fit. And so I, it was me wanting to live the best life that I could since that diagnosis. So I'm not sure would I have gotten there without the diagnosis, maybe, possibly. Uh, but it was, and it's also for me, it's acceptance and surrender, which isn't doesn't mean that you're weak. It's just this is this is part of my life. This is um and it's made me stronger, I believe, and more mindful of other, uh, you know, people in my life and other people who struggle with chronic illnesses. And so I think, you know, I can only look at it as as making my life better. And in that way, I'm thankful. And, uh, uh, you know, am I sad that there's days that I, I'm not able to do the things that I you know, sure, but I think overall it's about me. Okay, this is it, and let's make the best life uh, possible for myself, regardless of of uh, having MS or not. Yeah, that, that's incredible. Well, Lori, you've made it through my ten questions. So for viewers, don't go away because up next, Lori will discuss her memoir. Horses in the Sand, which is a sequel to her first book, First Gear, a motorcycle memoir. So thank you so much, Lori. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks, Crystal. Appreciate pleasure. the time. Pleasure, pleasure. Thank you, viewers, for watching. And please check out all my other author interviews. And don't forget to subscribe to All About Canadian Books. Thank you for watching. <laughs>